fantastic now you have completed eight different topics in full detail now let's move on to our ninth topic which is initialize data types why i'm saying all you need is this video because i'm going to cover almost everything around different data types for example array list dictionary data table so first of all let's have a look you know what kind of a question that might appear look at this question it is simply asking me what is the how you initialize a data table okay you can pause it and read the question before we answer this question let's understand how you initialize different data types then you can answer that specific question so the very first thing is array okay array now to understand array the first thing you do is you create a variable called array and then you select the data type so how do you select you click on this and then you select array of t and then you select the data type click on ok the moment you do this look at this what is important why i am really telling you you need to focus on this how it is being written once it is selected for example you are selecting string so string square bracket remember array will always be written in the square bracket this is remembering the square bracket is important point number one okay point number two okay look at the square bracket point number two how do you initialize it so let's see the very first style there are multiple different styles i'm going to show you the very first style is you simply write new the data type moon bracket and the and the curly braces okay so parenthesis and the curly braces i am using so this is one way and if you are initializing array with this format how do i add values to it to add the values i am using another assign activity and simply writing within the curly braces i am writing 1 2 3 4 5 so this is one way okay and make a note of this syntaxes now the second thing the second thing see how i am making note i will show you so this is how i am making note okay so this is the first way let me show you the second way the second way is new data type uh, then i am using the parenthesis and then curly braces curly braces i am defining 1 2 3 4 5 you instead of using two different assign activities i am using in one assign activity i am assigning the values this is another way what is the third thing do you know what is the third way of doing it yeah the third way is also this way new in 32 and within the parenthesis i am writing 3 why i am writing 3 here because i want to restrict the size of the array so when i am writing 3 that means i can have four objects inside that so when i am writing 3 why 4 why not 3 reason being your index starts from 0 so 0 1 2 3 you are saying the last index of that array should be 3 so for example if i write 2 let me show you let if i write 2 that means i can have the value in the 0th index first index and the second index so that means i can have three values so you might get questions you know if the syntax is written like this and which is the right option which will execute let's say 1 2 3 1 2 3 comma 4 1 2 1 2 you know many people will select 1 2 because it's written 2 so two values no that is incorrect you can have for example if i write okay two values what is happening it is giving throwing an error and what is the error it is saying uh, compiler encountered processing expression new so and so array initializes missing one element so you should have another element three so now it is correct getting it so these are the couple of important points around array let's move on to our second topic which is list again for the list first you create a list variable right list variable you have created and look at how the list once you have selected the list variable it is coming in triangular bracket and the array comes in the square bracket this is important to remember triangular bracket okay so there will be questions where um, a list with a square bracket list with a triangular bracket then you should know list is always with a triangular bracket array is always with a square bracket so how do you select a data type of this you can simply type system dot collection dot list system in 32 by browsing okay you hit on the browse and type it and then select your data type okay so final thing to remember is this one um, in the square bracket how list and then square bracket data type this is how it appears okay all right this has to be well remembered now how do you initialize a list to initialize a list all you do write new 
list of in the bracket you write of int 32 data type from 1 to 3 4 5 in single line you are creating the list at the same time you are passing the value this is one way the other way let's say i don't want to pass the value okay it has to be entered dynamically then this is the way you have to write new list of int 32 i have declared the data type and then i can add add to collection activity and i'm entering value say here in the collection i have written list the variable name and in the item i'm passing one value it's not an array of values i'm passing one one value so dynamically you can enter values you know for each loop so this is how you will be declaring so this also you should make a note in a notepad so you can see how i'm making note right the same way you should make a note so array we have seen these three formats and list we have seen these two formats okay now let's move on to our next format which is uh, dictionary next data type in the dictionary how do you do it you simply create a variable dictionary first thing is you create a variable and you select the dictionary data type and look at this dictionary also written in the triangular bracket and then the first key and value right dictionary means key and value so key is a string type and this is an int 32 and this can be selected by going for browse for types go to browse for types and simply type system dot collection dot generic dot dictionary or go to dictionary and scroll down and look for the system dot collection then you would find it and then you select the key and the value so once you have done it how do you initialize it to initialize it's pretty simple new dictionary this is your string type which is a uh, my string is a uh, my key is a string type and my value is an integer type so that's how so depending on your requirement you can define it new dictionary of string comma so this is the format to initialize um, now the second thing is how do you add values to it for example here i am mentioning dictionary and i am saying key because the first thing should be a a string so i'm saying key equals to one and i'm using another value dictionary key is equal to two now tell me how many total items there will be there will be there in the dictionary because i'm using the same key key can i use it or it's going to throw me error is it going to throw error because i'm using the same key no it's not going to throw error what would happen when this runs it will assign the value to the key the value key will have one and when i'm using another activity then that the one will be replaced with two this is important okay many people will be confused oh, he has mentioned key and key two times so i think this should throw an error this won't throw an error let me execute and show you so here i'm trying to print the uh, dictionary key value so the output of this will be two okay it won't throw an error so look at this if I'm writing key one, then there will be two elements in the dictionary, key and key one. So instead of key, you can write any value. Let's say Rakesh is equal to one, Rakesh is equal to whatever you can write. It's up to you. See, it's it's not going to throw an error. Getting it? And what is the output written? Two. You saw it, right? It is written two. Okay. So this you have understood for the dictionary. So make a note in your notepad or in the Excel. New dictionary of string. This is the initialization format. Now look at the data table. In the data table, how do you write? First of all, you create a variable called dt1 and you select the system.data.data table by going for browse for types. System. What is the system.data is the namespace dot data table. Now there are two different ways to do it to initialize. Do you know? So one way is pretty simple, straightforward, new system.data.data table. This is one way. The other way is also you can write something like this new data table. So writing the namespace is not mandatory. You can simply also write new data table that also will work. Okay, make a note of all this. And then here I'm building a data table. Now answer this question. I have got two different columns, name and ID. And here in the name I have put Rakesh and in the ID I'm entering one. Okay. And in the build data table, I'm using the data table variable dt1, which I have just created. Fine. And then I am using a message box. Let me show you the message box how I have written. So how the output would come for this one? Tell me. So in the uh, exam, right, you will get a lot of such images which you have need to yourself you need to evaluate. That's why I tell you not to really dependent on any kind of a dump. You have to really know things how it is working so you can answer any kind of question. So here look at it, it is saying dt1 row 0 dot item 0. That means in the data table only one data is there, Rakesh and 1. So here what, what value would come from here? The value will come row 0 item 0 means row 0. In the first only one row is there. So row will be always be 0. 
item 0 means the first column value which is Rakesh will come from this output and then say Rakesh and his ID is it will say and then here the row is again 0 item 1 means 1 will come so what would be the final output Rakesh and his ID is 1 getting it so you so this kind of a question would come where um, you have to think okay uh, the output of this will be this, this output of this, this. So final output should look like this. So you should choose the one of the correct answer. So it could be any, any question comes, doesn't matter. You should know how it is working. So if I run this, what, what I'm expecting? Rakesh, whose end, and his ID is one. That is how it should come as a output. So if you have gone through this, look at it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can see the output, look at the output, Rakesh and his ID is 1 and during the exam, you don't have any other option to practice or uh, try it out. You have to think. So if you know how, what should be the output, then you can easily answer it. So what is the answer here? Rakesh and his ID is 1. So getting it. So these are the things. So let's answer one of the questions. So here it is a pretty simple question. Um, you can in, take your time, pause it and read it. Uh, it, is answer, it is asking to correct this error. What should the developer? add to an assign activity before the add data row activity so that means data table has not been initialized so this is the answer new system data dot data table this is the answer okay so always reading the last sentence in the in your question in your exam is very important the question might trick you so having a proper understanding of the last sentence is very important okay it might say which is not correct sometimes it might say which is the right one or what is so you should be able to read and highlight the for appropriate words so that you choose the right answer all right guys so uh, that's about it uh, for this specific video uh, and then let's continue on to the next video before that please do type completed once you are done with this okay let's move on to our next topic thank you